How are you doing everyone? It's Jordan here from Switchwatch. Now today I've got a review kind of-ish, that's a industry technical term, of the port of Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom Prince's Edition. Now this game has been reviewed to death already and I wasn't planning on reviewing it per se, but since I bought it from the Japanese eShop, I was playing it all day today and thought, hey, why not give you some of my thoughts regarding it on the Nintendo Switch. So it's not really my usual in-depth analysis, looking at the themes and the full... <laughs> okay, I can't do that. This is just a look at the Switch version, if it's balked or not, and just a few of my early impressions, so let's get on with it. First, a little overview of the story. This game is set 100 years after the events of the first game. This stars Evan. He's a prince who's about to become king, but thanks to a coup, he is thrown out of his kingdom. But he plans to make a new one, the power-hungry little sh altruist. Yes, he wants to do the noble thing and create a kingdom where everybody can live happily forever after. The money must be nice too. I haven't been instantly enamored with the story in my first handful of hours like I was the first game, but to be honest, I don't think any game in history has instantly gripped me like the first game did. It was a lot to live up to, and don't get me wrong, I am very intrigued by where this one is going next. I'm enjoying it so far. And if you haven't played the first game, do not worry. While they are set in the same world kind of thing, the stories aren't particularly connected. You can play this first without feeling left out, which is great because I did play the original like, what was it, like 10 million years ago? It's been a long time, and I can't remember much apart from the opening few hours, which was incredible. Nino Kuni 2 is an RPG. It differs quite a bit from the original, which had an almost Pokemon-like element to it. But this is just full-on action RPG, and I think I enjoy it a little bit more. The original did feel somewhat rigid to me. This feels like you have more control, even if it is perhaps looking a little janky while, you know, you're just watching some gameplay footage. But in your hands, it feels good. It's tight and seems to have a decent amount of depth with my time so far. What instantly sold me on the game, however, was the comparisons of two of the best games of all time, Suicoden and Dark Cloud. I think we can all agree on that, and if you can't, well, well, nothing really. Like what you want. Kingdom and town building with citizen recruitment, yes, yes, please. After chapter 3, you will gain access to Evermore, which is what I know is going to suck more time out of me than is advisable. What with a full-time job, a family, and a YouTube channel to run. But, you know, it's happening, I can feel it, I'm going to spend a lot of time in this kingdom simulation little bit. Here you'll slowly build up this kingdom and the citizens within, which can be recruited by doing side quests for them. Over a hundred people in total you can add to your kingdom, earn dosh for you, and get some sweet upgrades to help you on your quest. While there appears to be a lack of customization in placement, I shouldn't grumble as this is just this is just kind of like my wet dream in terms of gameplay, and yeah, that's disgusting, but I love this sort of stuff. And I'm sure I'm going to be playing it on the side almost entirely for the kingdom building aspect, even though I am interested in the story as well, I should clarify that. In terms of this port, which is what you probably all want to know, well, I think we all heard the PS4 version had some trouble at times keeping up with things in the overworld, although I believe that it targeted 60 frames per second. Naturally, that ain't happening on the Switch. Having played a good chunk of time in both docked and handheld mode, I think it's pretty much what we expected. 30 frames per second is the target here. And during the general gameplay of walking through towns and during battles, it tends to hold that well enough. Although not perfect by any means, there is noticeable drops here and there, but nothing too distracting or game-breaking. The overworld map though, oh boy, it is chugging McChuggerton town here. Oh my god, it is rough. From a big company such as Bandai, it is unfortunate to have this lack of sheen, but like I said, considering the PS4 version suffered, I mean, were we expecting anything less on the Switch? Is it bad? Yes. Does it make the game unplayable? No, the overworld thankfully isn't really the main focus of the game. Yeah, you do have to traverse, but it's hardly an ordeal doing it from time to time. Now this is a 40 hour RPG, way more if you want to do everything, plus it contains all the DLC content, hence why it's called the all-in-one edition in some markets. Plus the updates that included more difficulty options, which was the biggest complaint people had upon initial release saying it was too easy. Well, try the two harder difficulties and see what you think. This release is a full fat $60 on the eShop, 
which for a game as old as this and readily available and cheap on other consoles, it's going to be a hard pill to swallow and I completely understand if you don't want to pay that price. If this was $40, no one would have batted an eyelid and thought it was brilliant, but hitting that $60 mark, it is tough. Even people balk at Nintendo when they do that for a Wii U game, right? Nobody wants to pay $60 for an older game and I understand that. It is £50 on the UK eShop, so yeah, that's not any better either. It is available physically though for around the same price, but no doubt will be cheaper in the future. If you want to pick up a physical copy, then check the links below in the description and the pinned comment. There are purchase links for Amazon UK and US, and if you use those, then you can support us at the same time, and that's brilliant. Or, if you want the superior box art, then there's also the Japanese version, which does play in English, by the way. I just like the artwork much more. There is a link below for that one too, if you want to import it with our discount code, SWITCHWATCHTV. If you use that code, you can get 5% off any physical item from PlayAsia as well. And by the way, before we get into my just overall general thoughts, just a quick note about the music. Oh my god, Joe Hisashi is an absolute genius. They must have paid this guy the big bucks for like composing this soundtrack, but every minute of music is worth the price they probably paid for him. It is magical. It elevates the game so much beyond what most other composers could do. Inspiring, epic, whimsical, it's a 10 out of 10 soundtrack all day long. And it's a type you could listen to away from the game. And it could still bring emotion to you. I mean, I just listened back to some tracks just now, and I almost had tears in my eyes. And I've not even completed the game. It's just that powerful. What a brilliant composer. Alright, overall, I know a lot of people were worried about this port, even the original struggled and that is a much less intensive game, but it seems as long as you're not expecting a full fat frame rate and, you know, a hitch here and there, then it's fine for you, I would say. Apart from the overworld, it's terrible, it is really terrible, but I would not call it a deal breaker. If it is a deal breaker, well, just buy it on another console or on PC. As a game though, so far for me, it's a brilliant action RPG, which may exceed the original in some areas, but also regress in others. You can tell that the budget is toned down a little bit for this one. But what I do know is that this is a top tier JRPG series and one that should not be overlooked. I can't wait to see what they do with number three, if they ever make it. In my six or seven hours with the game so far, I've had a belting time and I cannot wait to see where they go next in terms of the story and how much of a time sink the kingdom management will be. So even though I can't give a definitive score for this video, it's a definite thumbs up from me so far at this point. What are your thoughts? Have you played it on the PS4 or PC before? How would you compare it to the original game? Do you plan on picking up the Nintendo Switch version? Do let me know in the comments below as I would love to hear your thoughts. Alright, many thanks to our executive producers Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcrush7776, Elissa, Punky Dusta, Michael Del Polito, Cartoon Sarum, Jack Severus, Vilas, Robotech, and Z. Thank you for your amazing, wonderful support. Plus you, yes you, watching right now. If you watch all the way through, what a legend you are. The longer you watch, the more YouTube helps us grow. Be sure to leave a king or a crown in the comments with all his money bags that he's making, the greedy son of a gun, and I'll give you some money bags back because there's never enough money in the world. Check out some of our other stuff. Check out Juan's review of the original game on the Switch, plus some recent JRPG themed videos. Or if you want something completely different, how about some Cruising Blast? Don't miss that review. It is a very wonderfully stupid game. Alright guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on another video. Have a good one.